Hi everybody, this is Mary Thomas and I'm Stephanie Thomas from Thomas Thomas and Thomas PC, also known as the Sales Tax Sisters. And so what we're going to be talking about today is, so you've decided to upgrade your accounting system. Woohoo! Good for you! Well, upgrades can be a wonderful thing. They can make your life a whole lot easier in terms of what your accounting system can do. And everybody loves something that's brand spanking new and shiny. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some downfalls that we see with people when they hit the audit context. And usually when you hit an audit context, that's when you find out that your upgrade didn't translate into an upgrade. Exactly. So the first thing is, is that when you're deciding that you're going to upgrade your accounting system, get buy-in from the people that actually are in your accounting department. Are they going to use the system that you actually purchase. You'd be surprised at how many people don't. Exactly. And the other thing is you have to you have to find out when you're upgrading your system, what's gonna happen to the data from the old system. But well, before we jump in but before we jump into that, let's let's explore just a little bit more so that you understand fully what we're talking about, what I'm talking about when I say make sure the people are going to use your accounting system. There are lots of instances where people will have little piles of information in different places. The accounting system is geared to do X, Y, Z, but because, you know, Gina doesn't feel like figuring out how to have that new system do, perform every function, she'll have an Excel spreadsheet where she keeps some information so it doesn't make it into the accounting system. And that's and that seems to be a default for a lot of people, especially as it relates to sales and use tax, where mm -hmm. for whatever reason they don't use the upgraded system, they use an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. And so when you go in, when Gina decides she's gonna leave and you get audited and part of that audit period is her, it's when she was handling it, it's not in the system, it's in some Excel spreadsheet that you know nothing about. So when you are going, when you're upgrading your system, you have to go in and you have to make sure that everybody is using the system as you intended before you get audited. You just, you have to look and you have to make sure. And it's something that it, it sounds hard to do. It's not because people had no Gina. No, she's not using that module in there because she don't like it or because, or because she doesn't have time to figure out exactly how it works. So she's going to just stay doing her spreadsheet until such time as she has time to figure it out. We all know how that works. I'm no, still trying to figure out how my water sprinkler system works. Okay. And, and it's been a minute. And it's been, yeah. So that does not happen. So when you're talking about upgrading, get your buy-in and make sure that people are using that system at, as it is intended to be used that you don't have little piles of information and you don't know where it is. That's true. So jumping back into Stephanie's point, take it. The other thing is when you're getting a new system and say it goes online, um, you need to, in 2021, you need to know what's gonna happen to all that information for the prior years. Exactly. Because if it's lost, um, that's not going to help you in the audit context. You will generate an estimate and estimates are high because you aren't going to get a windfall by not being able to provide the information. And that's something that we've dealt with clients with before when we'll say, well, you're being audited for this audit period. And they'll say, well, we upgraded the computer system halfway through the audit period. So we have all the information for the part where, where we did the upgrade, but the part where we, where we were on the old system, the old system is locked. Well, you better unlock it because exactly. this auditor is not going to want to hear that you don't have information for two years. They're going to do an estimate. And the other part of it is the controller's office does not say that you have to have a certain um, accounting system or a certain accounting software. They don't tell you how to conduct your business. But if you are audited, uh, if you have certain things in place, it'll make your audit run a whole lot smoother. So if you have software where you can't convert things to Excel or Access or something that can be manipulated, that may be problematic in terms of an audit. That can add an extra layer of time and energy that may not work in your favor. 
And I've been noticing that a lot lately mm-hmm. uh, is that you have, we have clients who will get accounting systems and they'll say, oh, well, it converts to Excel. Some of them just straight up say it doesn't, mm-hmm. which is a blessing too. But they'll just say, you know what, it converts to Excel. You get the Excel download and the sales don't sort. Sales are empty and it doesn't. It's and not it's a, a clean conversion at all. It looks like something that you're like, who came up with this? Because it's crazy. If you're buying a system, if you haven't already bought it, and they say, oh, it converts to Excel, put some data in and make sure it that it converts clean. Yes. And then I had a bookkeeper tell me that she has clients that actually puts in, that actually put information in the XX part of the spreadsheet, you know, way off to the side. No, you want I, something that you that can be manipulated and sorted and easy for um, not only you, but in case an order comes easy for them to understand and deal with it. The whole point of our audit series is to tell you things that will make an audit go a whole lot smoother for you. And if you have software that um, they can use and, and, and manipulate to sort and you know eliminate certain things they need to eliminate that makes things go a whole lot smoother for everyone involved yeah and the thing about it is and part of and and this particular video was about oh so you're automating you're uh, no not automating you're upgrading make sure that when you take that on that you don't go from a situation where you were compliant to a situation where you're not compliant because the upgrade wasn't done exactly as it should be there is there's a saying in the accounting world garbage in garbage out Mm -hmm. make sure that when you're upgrading that you are actually putting in good information and that the correct information is coming out so don't just buy the software and everybody does it don't just buy the software throw stuff in it and think oh it's fitting out the right thing go in and look yeah and i think mary already mentioned this but Get feedback from your accounting department, the people who are actually doing the invoicing and who are, you know, um, doing the journal entries and and billing your clients. Yeah, and and paying things. See, get their feedback to see how they think the system might work. Yeah, because they're the people that have to buy into it. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think that that is it for your your upgrading your system. The next thing we're going to talk about in this series is automation. So it's a sister to this video, and we're just going to dive right on in it to the in the next video. So we will see you there. We want to thank you for watching this video. If you like us, please thumb us up, please subscribe, and hit bell. Go. Bye. Thank you. Bye.